you. And now, I'm about to witness <laughs> the awesome crushing might of Welcome, my friends. In a hotel room in Las Vegas. People might be complaining. You ever be in a hotel room and have somebody start knocking on the fucking wall? Like, how is that going to benefit you? I know where you are. Anyway, this is live in the stratosphere in Las Vegas. On the occasion of a fight, Eugene? Nah. My name is Travis. <laughs> no, this is a Dead Week show. We're going to be talking about the Ronda Ronda Lane. The Team Quest. Kerfuffle. And the lies that make all this possible. We saved Northcutt to Fedor to the World Series of Fighting fight this past weekend. We got to see John Fitch. Grind out, you should have come. For certain reasons that, uh, I mean, on the card, there are a few that we, uh, Kenny Magalhaes, and there are a few fights that we cared about. But in total, World Series of Fighting, strange right spot. But let's right now listen to the words that said it all. I'm on my way back to nowhere. I took my time, but I could not see I'm taking a real good look at you. Taking a real good look at your face. Being paid back in full always. All right, there were some, there were some complaints about how loud the music was last week. I haven't got the system down. Some people were saying, ah, you know, Eugene, you need to, you need to get a mic. Of course, I'm in Las Vegas. I left the mic. Well, mostly I left the mic because the mic was in a bag. It was in a bag with a gun. And I had to make sure to not remember to take the gun on the airplane to get to Las Vegas. So that's where I left the mic with the bag and the gun. You know, currently being used by the, the probably the, uh, the, the Filipino valets who parked the car, who found the gun and then went out to c commit a round of crimes. Sans microphone. Anyway, this is round 344. I'm your host, Eugene S. Robinson, and I'm beat. Last night we had a we had a, a bona fide knuckle up sighting. I'll start the hour with that. Uh, well, it won't be an hour. It'll be a short show because there's nothing. I I could go on for three hours. You know that if I wanted to, but maybe I just don't want to. Maybe you got better things to do. But uh, I'm sitting there uh, uh, having drinks, and uh, uh, guys start gesticulating. I don't see it. It's behind my back. But the people I'm with say, guys. Dude. And at first they're up here, and then like they're down below, and then and uh, <laughs> and my lady is like, yeah, I, I know I'm hot, but you know these guys are like looking at me, and then finally I go me, and and they go, no, oh, him, him, and I don't know that dude wants his name used. Like I said, if you see me in Vegas, you don't see me in Vegas, so I don't know that he wants his name known. Let's just say Mr. R. We just call him Mr. R. And Mr. R was like, ah, shit, I, I watch if I did it. I watch a care, don't care preview. I'm a big knuckle up fan. And I said, he tells me his name. I go, ah, I recognize your name from the comments. So he actually bought me a, a drink, a nice uh, silver Patron. Man, that was so nice. And it wasn't the first drink, and nor was it the last of the evening. So I've had a, a rough evening for a man of my advanced age. But I'm still here to do the show. Let it never be. Let it never be said that Eugene S. Robinson didn't work hard for his twenty dollars. What? Twenty dollars? Secret monetary. I get taxed for the, when I get paid for knuckle up. Anyway, I want to go into something, 
and I, I touched on it. If you happen to see If I Did It, and I, I know all of you don't watch If I Did It, so I'll talk about it again as a lead-in for, for, for something that I think it's about time that you woke up and smelled the coffee on. There, there's going to be absolutely no music during the show since I haven't been able to get the mic and the complaints about the sound, so you just hear me. And if it's still audio uh, affected, then then for sure I got to use the, the uh, I got to use the microphone. But uh, so this past week, and, and I'm sure at this point you've read it. If you've not read it, you've if you've not seen it or read it, you're going to hear it now for the first time. They interview they interview uh, Anna Maria Demars, uh, also known as Mom Mom Rhonda Rhonda's mom, and she was talking about Rhonda's coach and said, look. This guy, this guy didn't give her the time of day when she walked through the door. You know, um, he, uh, he, 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 you know, she showed, she, and when she walked through the door, she was already, you know, a, a bronze medalist, uh, had been, you know, world champ judo player, and it took six months to get her attention. And then only because he was a, you know, a, co- a, a I would say nut jumper, but in this case, not right, uh, you know, a uh, 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 um, coat, coat riding piece of shit that, uh, you know, is using her name to get people in the house. Like he created a champion when she was already a champion when she came to him. He said, I'm going to tell everybody right now to not go to him. If you're going to go to him, if I, and the choice quote of, of it all was, if it wasn't illegal to do so, I would run him down with a car. Oh my God, look who's calling. And that's my ringtone, taxi driver. Hey man, you, just, you call right in the middle of the show. Am I live? Yeah, you're live. I figured it out. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right. Well, enjoy. <laughs> Thanks for calling me back, man. Anything you want me to talk? Anything? You, anything you want me to address on this knuckle up that I haven't gotten to yet? <laughs> okay, I heard none of what you said. I will try to do none of what you said. All right, man. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> but how do you like that? All I. I Kid, kid, not tell you is like Charlie Brown's teacher. <laughs> so that's all I could hear, even when he's talking, like sitting right next to me. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so she said, if it was was not against the law, that I would, I would, um, and I also said, Mr. R, thanks for the drink, my friend. That was all right. I, I, I'm glad I. I'm sorry I didn't have to. Usually, if I'm seeing somebody from uh, uh, it was a knuckle up listener, uh, uh, a knucklehead. A knuckle up head. Uh, it's at an Oxbow show, and I can actually do something for you guys and get you in for free. But this was just me drinking at a bar. So, uh, um, so she said, if I could run him down, I would run him down, and that he's just a bad guy and he sucks. And um, and, and and that was the end. Of course, there's no response from Rhonda. You know, um, I mean, this is her mother. You don't expect to. You know, you don't expect to. You know, my mother's on my Facebook page, and uh, at one point she's, you know, you know, as will inevitably happen in Facebook, you, you cross swords with people. Like somebody said something that kind of irked my mother, and my mother said something like back, and it was like it was one of those wildlife world of nature shows because I was like waiting in the wings. I was waiting in the wings for somebody to flip shit at my mother, and I was going to like ah, tear them up, you know. I mean, you've seen Godfather Part Two. Those guineas are crazy about their mothers. Uh, okay, I'm no, I'm no guinea, but uh, you know, my mom could come in on my page and say anything she wants. <laughs> you know, like Goodfellas. You know, Janice could do whatever she wants. You know, so uh, so uh, so Rhonda's Rhonda's mom spouts off, but then uh, as I was as we were dealing with that news on if I did it, I get a text, and for those of you again who don't pay attention to, to if I did it I'm gonna read to you the text and it, it was great and let me see if I can find it right now um, bu, 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 bu. here we go here we go we're talking about Bill Buckley and here we go uh, think Rhonda's insane mom is a work distract the media from her dating a married man and wife beater allegedly and her admitting to domestic violence in her book. I'm mad at myself for not seeing this sooner, he says. And like I said, I was I told him I was gonna steal it and take credit for it, but actually I don't feel like it like I like I need to. That was a good, good impression. 
I, I think I was going to get there, get there myself, you know. And if you don't believe that that's the case, how come? How come if you if you're on Rhonda's Twitter feed, it's been an amazingly quiet time, you know. I get the sense if you want if you want to know the truth of it, I get the sense that that was one of those situations where you remember Rich Franklin at one point won and uh his his girlfriend at the time maybe his fiance i don't know she elbowed people body checked and elbowed people out of the way so she could get in get into the cage and go are you okay baby time for my close up mr demet are you okay rich oh how's that rich there's a herb dean sorry you want so badly to get on camera and, and rich franklin this is when I, when I decided to interview rich franklin franklin for the fight book if, if you have the fight book fight everything you want to know about asking or afraid to get your asking for asking if you actually have that book you know there is no rich franklin in the book because he he dragged me all the way out to ohio and then uh, and then uh and then stood me up apparently something his father dying something you know some guys have their priorities straight i guess you know, I guess it meant nothing to him that I came all the way. His father, his father, his father. Was the, the, what about what about me? In any case, this is why I start to love Rich Franklin. She climbs into the cage after elbowing and body checking people out of the way, and he looks at her and says, "I told you about this." And he did absolutely, positively, did not want her in there. It was like the time when I was watching a Gil Melendez fight with a bunch of fighters and he Gil won uh, and he was televised and the first thing he did was to uh thank the love of his life Kerry you know Kerry Taylor and all the fighters at the, at the, you know, gathered around they kind of looked at each other like why why would he do that <laughs> why why would you cut off a, a potential significant source of ching chang that comes from being on national tv <laughs> And in one hundred foot leap of total stupidity, go and admit to your love for for another uh, another woman to, to, to the guys who are who are always on the work. You know that that seems strange. It's like, man, do you know how much potential ching chang that you just let walk out the door because of your public protestation of love? You know, Rich Franklin would have none of that. He's like, I'm not gonna have my future prospects impinged upon. Get out of the cage. Right. So, uh, um, so it felt very much to me like that kind of moment. Like, I don't know entirely that Rhonda was thinking that, that, that Travis was going to, was going to take that leap. You know, it, it's like the couples that get tattoos of each other's names. You know, one of the first tattoo parlors I ever went into, there's a guy, a Latino cat sitting there and he's got like six or seven women's names on his forearm and they're, and they're scored off. And then he's having another one on put Antonio. First of all, let me explain something to you, friend. Antonio is not impressed that she's number eight on your fucking arm, okay? And not only that, she's not impressed that she's got to spend the rest of her life, apparently, looking at the other seven scr scrawled out names on your arm. You get that shit covered. It's not notches on a gun. You're not Alexander Mahler Gusterson with your knockout thing on your spades on your arm. Whatever you said, just stop. And that's when I developed this theory that any couple that gets a that gets a tattoo of each other's names on their body, it is doomed. From Johnny Depp and Winona Ryder to you know Tommy Lee and Pamela Anderson, it is a kiss of death because it attempts to to make real that which is shakily unreal to the people who believe it to be real. It's like oh, I can make manifest the reality of my love by having somebody scribble ink on my fucking arm because that's permanent. It's just not permanent. You know what's permanent? Death. That's permanent. You know. So, uh, so I, I don't think Rhonda. I don't think Rhonda was prepared for that. In fact, I don't think that Rhonda. And I could be. I, I could be wildly out of line here. Completely and wildly out of line. I don't think that Rhonda was. I think it was. You know, we all talk about Bob. You know, the generic name that her mother has used for her boyfriends. And her getting a real, a real, I don't know if she's going to be Ms. Marvel or, or, but she's under serious consideration, or at least she, she has redirected the discussion around herself about Ms. Marvel. I mean, this is, this is Hollywood shot calling of, of the highest, you know, she is actually successfully with the aid of the bald one, 
and, and, and Zufa has successfully turned what nobody should want to see, which is, you know, this Holly Holm fight into something that you kind of, even the most jaundiced critical observers uh, like me are looking at and go, oh, maybe, maybe I'll, on November 14th, maybe I'll try to watch this. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'll try to watch it. So, I, so how, how is it that suddenly Ronda goes from being carefully, carefully uh, stage managed to all of a sudden making these major missteps? Could it be that you know the the, the proximity to the flame of fame has created a thing? Oh, I could do that. I don't need any hand. Like I can, you know. And then, but I I have to say that I would venture a guess that hello seven viewers. I would venture a guess that 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 she was one, not prepared to, she was put on front street by the guy taking the photograph in the restaurant that caught them to begin with. Because what, you, do you think, do you seriously think that, that uh, Travis Brown is the, first, is the first one that Ronda's messed around with? Luke Rockhold's sitting somewhere going, hey, what about me? I, I was in there, I, I got in there. I don't know that for a fact. AKA is only 15 minutes from where I train. What do I know? I don't know things I hear. I think all little birds. I got little birdies. They tell me things. I heard a few things about a few things. Who knows? So, so I, I think it was it was a, a, a stumble. But you, you you know who I think? I have to acknowledge here for a minute that I might be going down crazy lane. Just a little bit. But you have to understand the complicated nature of the relationship between Zufa, the bald one, and stars. You know, good stars are company stars. Big stars are not always company stars. Therefore, big stars are not always good stars, if you understand what I mean. So, you know, if all of a sudden somebody who's been carefully stage managed starts to express a desire for freedom, in, starts to express a desire for more money, starts to express a desire for fighters' unions, or things are going to happen. Strange things. Now, I'm not saying the bald one manufactured, you know, the world has eyes. I'm sitting thinking I'm minding my own business in Las Vegas last night, and, and um, uh, uh, you know, dude, uh, dude, uh, knuckle. Now, good that, you know, he, he was friendly, you know, had a friendly disposition. Mr. R could have run up last night and stabbed me in the neck with a butter knife because that's how he rolls. But he didn't. He could have. You know, so I'm not saying that, you know, every wall, every eye on the street is a, is, is a Zufa agent, a co-conspirator. But you have to understand that, that, you know, somehow, some whoa, whoa, somehow, I mean, things sort of happen, strangely. So the photograph of them sitting in a restaurant, purportedly, allegedly taken by a guy who was photographing his daughter, even though, you know, I know a little bit about photography. Your daughter? <laughs> Man, you, you got a photo like this. Your daughter is down here. I, I mean, oh, I just happened to discover. I think he saw his daughter was like, whoa, kick, kick. hey, it's my daughter, you know. Um, but even that was was deniable. But in the first, what, six months? How long have they been going out? Has this been going on a year? Not even a year, probably. So do you want any relationship that you've been in in under six months to go on full blast via Twitter? And then if not via Twitter, do you want within weeks of that, the divorced man or the, the divorcing man whose wife is accusing him of domestic abuse as well as the mother of his child or children or whatever is going on with half his life, you know, to be uh, twit, tweets, counter tweets, you know, photos over, and then dude stands up at some sort of press conference or releases some kind of statement that this is, we're not dating, we're not children, this is the deal. What are you talking about? Well, let me tell you a little story. I was going out with this woman once, and, well, woman is, a, is a, an aggressive, it was when I was, I was 19, right? And, uh, and she was a runaway, it's a punk rock insanity, she was a runaway, I had a runaway from home, she was probably about 15, uh, 19, she's 15, she ran away from home, we were living a punk rock lifestyle on the Lower East Side, and we came out West together, right? and, but we didn't have, you know, I didn't, my van, I couldn't, she wasn't going to sleep in the van, I'm sleeping in the van, and uh, I go, she says, look, there's a party tonight, I want you to, you know, pick me up, we'll go, 
she was hanging out with my guitar player at the time, his wife and her friends and so on, while I was living, stealing food and trying to, I mean, totally die. I had to pay for college myself. You know, my mom helped me the first year, but then I, we got into a big fight and then something, and I had no money, nothing. So living like a, like a, like a derelict. And so finally I, I show up at the party because there might be food at the party. So I'm excited about going to the party. And she's at the party and she's talking to her friends. And I'm sitting at a table with these guys in this band called the, the Five Pliers. You know how I remember this. And uh, and these guys, uh, in a, they're all Brits in a very British way. They look at her and they go, who is this then, eh? And I didn't like the way they were talking. And it, it, experience w had taught me that what I should have done at that time is keep my fucking mouth shut because I might have learned something. And, but I didn't like they were talking and I, uncharacteristic of me, I want to establish some sort of ownership. So, you know, they're talking about, who is this then, eh? And the guy was about to explain and I, I said, that's my girlfriend. And they all got quiet and looked at each other and I was like, God damn it, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, and then of course it was revealed to me a few days later. You know, my guitar player calls me, "Go, oh, JT is fucking Vincent the hairdresser," and I was like, "Perfect, perfect. He can take care of her now." <laughs> you know. Uh, then she robbed him and went back east and robbed everybody. She told Eugene kicked me out. He kicked me out. He impregnated me and he kicked me out. In actual fact, it was a Filipino hairdresser who impregnated her. But uh, that, that's a lie she could tell for nine months. And then everybody in New York, all the drug dealer friends that she had, she was staying with the drug dealer friends. Uh, Eugene's a piece of shit. And my one or two supporters was like, nah, that doesn't sound like Eugene. He's a good guy. Does it? And then they wake up one morning, and it was like the Grinch who stole Christmas. Their leather jackets were gone. Their drugs were gone. Their cash was gone. Their Doc Martens were gone. And she was gone. You know what so, so, but I'm talking about that moment at the table where I take that cliff dive and I go, that is my girl, like straw in my freaking throat. That is my girlfriend. I mean, I just could see Rhonda sitting there. It's like, you know, Travis, you know, man, we're three months into this. What are you, go, what are, what are you doing? What are you doing tweeting, having press conferences? Telling people, we don't owe an explanation for anything. Don't apologize. Don't explain it. Unnecessary. Unnecessary. I mean, I could just imagine the horror, the Rich Franklin-esque horror of, of having Travis Brown say, this is my angel baby. We are life partners forever. I mean, dude, you need to look around you. I'm talking to Travis Brown. You need to look around you and check out the MMA room that you're in. You know, you've not won the big fights, you know, and now you have emerged as a threat to the narrative that Zufa has invested tons of money in. You ever see that, that the first Godfather or read the book, The Godfather, why Jack Waltz, the, the guy, the studio head is so upset with, uh, with uh, the, the, the Frank Sinatra corollary because I developed this time, of course, in the book, they only make brief mention of this in The Godfather, but in the book, it turns out the guy's a pedophile, right? He's been developing this talent, and apparently this teenage girl, and the Frank Sinatra corollary comes in and, and sweeps, you know, swoops on her. So, uh, but <laughs> a lot of time and a lot of effort. I mean, we, do, you, or do you have any institutional recall of when Dana White said, the bald one said, hey, you know what? We're not, women's MMA is nowhere. And from that to her being, if, I mean, she at this point, if you don't think she's got there, you're very desperately wrong. They love her on Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon. I mean, she, she could, her, her agent right now could call up any talk show and she could be on on Monday, you know, tonight. You know, it, that, so, so to have this, this guy, Bob, the new Bob, just because he's a fighter, stumble into it like, this is my angel, baby. We're in love. We're not dating. We, she, I'm her man. She's my woman. The fuck? You know what, Jack? You should have noted. The, you should have noted the total glacial silence, much like there was around that table with the five pliers. Guy silent, looking at me, exchanging glances silently. Because right now, that's a table you're at. You haven't won any big fights. 
You got this fucking domestic, uh, domestic violence beef looking at you, you know, and you are with the golden girl of the UFC. You're a fucking liability, Jack. You fall down a flight of stairs, you know, you get electrocuted by an errant toaster wire. I, I'm having to say that, <laughs> that none of these things are going to be accidental. You know, and, 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 and okay, you know, Rhonda's book has been out a while. You know, somebody at Bloody Elbow latched onto this whole idea of, you know, she actually really did beat up uh, her ex, creep, peeper, peeper, creepy, McSne- sne- snappers, or whatever, the guy who was taking, you know, first of all, I understand this is like a Morrissey moment. You know, you had to sneak into my room just to read my diary. This was one of those moments. You know, you find out somebody is taking naked pictures of you that you don't want. Now, what do you do? But lots of screwy things happen. Lots of screwy things in life happen. You know, you know, maybe you're having sex with a married woman. Maybe that married woman neglects to tell you that her husband is dying of cancer. Maybe that would have mattered to you. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe. In any case, right now, you're not talking about people anymore. You're talking about business. So I don't know how this is going to end up. But, <laughs> uh, but and, and I do know that, you know, these are young people. And sometimes, you, you know, your heart is, a, heart is a lonely hunter or some other thing like this. These things, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I do know. I do know that these missteps are, are interesting. You know, after the DNB, the do nothing bitch thing and this, oh, my body, every muscle in my body is for something. And sorry if it's not for having sex with millionaires and, you know, with the, the Floyd Mayweather thing. you got to understand that this is a PR, PR, just, this, it's just a cue the clown music. Wah, wah, wah. Sorry, Rhonda. All that shit starts to ring hollow, you know. I mean... I hope to God it is love. I really do. I hope so. But you got to understand that this looks bad and plays even worse. <laughs> you know? What? what? Oh, she's just an angry, angry woman with a child who, whose husband left for you. And so she's making up allegations that he slapped around. And he, I, I don't know, man. It's, it's messy. And you know what? When you got a clear shot to a whole vault full of money, if you slip on a banana peel, it's not funny to people who like you. <laughs> it's very funny to people who don't like you. So those support, those supporters, those fans, you know, and, and insofar as where you go at this point in time, UFC follows, you're bringing lots of, you, you know, the growth deltas off of Ronda's back are probably pretty substantial. You know, it's about more than just you at this point. And speaking of about more than just you, the, the Uriah Faber, man, that, that's one tough chick that Uriah Faber. Uriah Faber ripped off the Uriah Faber tough chick thing in a long time. That's a sign of how far it's coming. Uriah Faber, Dwayne uh, Bang Ludwig, uh, 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 TJ Dillashaw thing. And now it's gotten, it's gotten weird. Like, like we didn't think it would be possible uh, – uh, because it's just it, that kind of weirdness is avoided a uh, team, uh, you know, alpha male. But largely, I mean, there's certain teams that you would be like, so what? Yeah, boy, what? So what? But that, that team has been pretty cohesive and, you know, it's, it's personality affected by, by Uriah Faber. But now there's this thing. He's not welcome back here ever. And I think uh, Kid Nate called it best when he said, you know what's happening? You know what's actually happening? What's happening now is these guys, this is sausage being made. These guys are working on a fight to Uriah Faber and, and, and uh, Dillashaw that, you know, will generate real interest a la Rashad Evans and John Jones, the prodigal son story, blah, 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 blah. You know what? For, this is, you know who wins for this? I'll tell you right away who wins for it. Uh, 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 Uriah Faber wins. Because if there was anybody that you want to see Uriah Faber fight, uh, you'd be hard-pressed to name them before I, could, uh, I, I begin the next sentence. Exactly. Who do you want to see Uriah Faber fight? Nobody. So for, for, as far as I'm concerned, for Uriah Faber, genius, genius maneuver. You know, I think he's, I don't think he managed it. I think he stumbled into it. But again, these are lies. These are lies.
<laughs> he's a lot. I'm talking about lies and the management of lies. You know, um, do I think Travis Brown is lying? No, I don't think Travis Brown is lying. It's, it, it doesn't always have to be telling a knowing falsehood. It could be just that you're saying stuff that doesn't end up coming true. You know, if you see this time next year, if you see Travis has now gone very public with his relationship with Rhonda, still with Rhonda, I am now. Because <laughs> you, yeah, you'll believe just about anything. I don't see it freaking happening. I don't see if she gets Ms. Marvel, I do not see it happening. And, and if you and and I'm gonna put my money on this, she no matter what, this is my belief in Rhonda, because you guys were thinking before I was hating on Rhonda. I believe she will fight Cyborg. There there have been across the transom of cell phone, there have been more disturbing allegations connecting Rhonda's weight gain to uh, for the use of performance enhancing drugs. These are unfounded, baseless. And I love them. <laughs> Baseless allegations, because when you guys are now finally thinking the way I think, you know, where like uh, uh, my advice to you is this, Claudius. Yeah, you never thought you'd get an I, I Claudius quote on here. My advice to you is this, Claudius. Trust no one. Trust no one. You, you, because who says? Says it so suddenly now she's this body positive. Oh, I'm gaining weight. Nah, but, 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 whatever. Whatever, and then taking fights in places where the UFC runs a drug test. Oh, okay, I'm not saying it's happening. I'm just saying I smell something. Could be coffee. Could be poop. Don't know. Don't know what it is. So, uh, so this the Dillashaw thing. I think I think it's stage manage. I think it's stage manage. From the, I mean, I'm not saying stage stage manage stuff is 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 bad. I you know I mean. You know what's not stage managed? This show. <laughs> the fact that I haven't launched a, a, you know, an atomic bomb, a, a bomb of nuclear proportion by saying something stupid that gets me in trouble is pretty freaking amazing. But I think I've got myself in this wonderful oxbow space that I could say or do just about anything and people would be like, and? Oh, they, they caught Eugene with a, you know, with this, a, a boiled sheep's head and a, Syringe in his arm, running after the president, and <laughs> uh, you know, and what would surprise you? I have very little would surprise you. I, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, um, uh, being a bad father. I think that would be. That's. The, I told myself I would kill myself before I would let that happen. The advice I wish my father had taken. <laughs> oh, yeah, nice, nice deep, going along with a nice MMA show, and then it gets into the psycho. A weird psycho, psycho topographic, uh, psycho topography of Eugene Robinson. Anyway, so this, this, I'm not saying it's bad. It just is what it is. You know, enjoy it. You know, my whole suitcase theory. If you remember from a few shows back, that we all represent these suitcases from Pulp Fiction with something glowing inside. The fancier in Las Vegas, you can see that clearly. You know, all these fancy out suitcases and high heel suitcases and thong suitcases and you know, spangled bra, you know, and you open up and it's moldy cheese in the suitcase. I won't be tricked. I will not be tricked by uh, the, the uh, I can enjoy the outside of the suitcase. I can enjoy the, the D Dillashaw and, the, you know, because where was he going to go? You know, okay, yeah, well, he, he doesn't have to go anywhere. He's a champion. Yeah, whatever. I'm not talking about that. So is Chris Weidman. Is Chris Weidman doing a Metro PCS commercial? No. Commercials? No. So I, I, I'm really ser very seriously talking about, very seriously talking about, it, it, you know, it, understanding what, what stage management is, appreciating it, but not being taken by it. And that's the difference. You guys who are still on me, but, oh, you and your Chad Mendes, Conor McGregor thing. You know what people have said? People, right-minded people have come out and said, you know what? You know what's good for MMA? If Conor McGregor beats Jose Aldo, it's good for MMA. You, these are people who are fairly agnostic. They are fairly agnostic. They're not, they're not, you know, they're not on Conor McGregor's nuts. They're not on Jose Aldo's nuts, but they're looking at it the way a business person looks at it. And that's it. Dude is good for business. You know, however, the UFC at this point now, Zufa at this point now is in a comfortable position of like, I actually am okay with whatever happens, happens. I need both of these guys to have their wings clipped a little bit. 
And if it's a hard fought fight that one of them just barely ekes out, then I got control again. You know, if McGregor runs through him like a hot knife through butter, then I got a guy who wants $100 million. And that's not as important as the fact that guys will start to think like when they could come in here with facts and figures, that they can demand $100 million. Because this is not about facts and figures. I want this as much as possible to be about emotions because I can confuse the emotions. Yeah, this is the bald one speaking. I can confuse the emotions, but I can't confuse figures. I can't confuse two for four. And so <laughs> two, four, never the twain shall meet. And Jose Aldo wins, and then he's, he's got a microphone from which to talk about this fucking, you know, fighter union and the equitable treatment and monthly salaries. Jesus Christ. You know, they cut Marcus Brimage, cut a couple of other fighters. This is the life. Or World Series of Fighting. That is a life. Yeah. I mean, it's not. I, I, I've made disparaging comments in the past about the World Series of Fighting. And I would be lying to you if I said that I watched the World Series of Fighting. Eugene, you're saying you're in Las Vegas. You're drinking like a sailor and stuff. And that you actually watch the fight? No, I don't watch the fight. But I have gone online and watched. Uh, um, uh, who did I watch? Well, hold on. No, 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 no. I watched Magalhaes and Matt Hamill. <laughs> One minute, eight second knee bar. Matt Hamill. This, this seemed like a right place to see this. I don't know, Matt Hamill could go back to advertising for threesomes with his wife. Nick Newell, Nick Newell, that was nice. Uh, unanimous decision, and then that was it. Uh, John Fitch and Yushin Okami, which I thought was uh, a, um, it was John Fitch-esque. So these, these three fights you can find online, you can take a look at them. Uh, World Series of Fighting, in total I feel better. I used to describe it as watching bad pornography. I don't do that anymore. But this is, this is not a lie. The World Series of Fighting is not a lie. By which I mean, ending up there is not stage magic. It's as real as it gets. <laughs> Where do I go from here? Where does a road turn? Try King of the Cage Gladiators Challenge. You know what? If you look at it, I'm training all the time anyway. I'm not getting paid for it. Like Kung Lee uh, so charitably said, when I came back with a belt from uh, Grappler's Quest. And I was showing it off, I was so happy about it. And as he walks by, he whispers just loud enough for me to hear. They pay you for that? <laughs> no, they don't actually, Mr. Lee, they don't uh, pay me for this. In fact, I had to pay to compete, you know? I had to pay to compete and then and then I beat some guys that gave me the belt. No, I don't, no posters, no commercials, no cash. Eh? You've made your point, sir. <laughs> but here we are, World Series of Fighting. John Fitch, who's been let go. You know, John Fitch, if you remember correctly, John Fitch was one of the guys at AKA who was upset with this EA deal. I'm going to use my image and likeness in perpetuity, and I don't get paid. You understand, don't you, that I'm still getting paid for that movie with Bill Cosby, Leonard Part Six, the worst movie of 1987. Every time they show it. My work has contributed to them making money, so they help me make money. The union sees to that. The union. What's your union, Eugene? Screen Actors Guild Union. Forever. Till I die. And then my estate gets it. So forever. So, uh, um, so this, is why, this is why Rhonda, will, because she is a gamer, will fight Cyborg, very specifically because she doesn't have to, and I think she's really curious. But if you think she needs fighting at this point, she's sticking around to help folks. And I think to take this last fight. And because if you do two movies in a year, then maybe that's, you know, no, no filming schedule is more than two months. You could do two movies in a year, that's four months max. And then from that, you're, you're, you're millions of dollars. You have time to train for fun if you want. I mean, somebody who's trained at the level she's been training, it's been part of her life. She might want to do something else. She might want to take up, learn how to play a saxophone. Who knows? Who knows? But this thing with the, with it, I just want you to be able to look at it, understand it for what it is, and, and then appreciate it. Good lies make reality seem real, as long as you have some sort of understanding that this is not reality. 
And don't start with me with this Chad Mendez of Conor McGregor thing. Even the jungle wants Conor McGregor to win. No fighters want it, but Conor McGregor put a point on it. He put a, he yanked the curtain aside for a second. And in, in, in essence, what he said to, to, the, to the rest of MMA is like, you may be hating me for what I'm doing right now. But you know, if you got a fight with me right now, you get on the phone and call your women and say, oh, my God, baby, we're buying a house. A mark of a good friend is that he makes money for his friends. Nobody who works with me comes out of it any poorer. I've said this time and time again, people, oh, Eugene this, Eugene that, you know, and you're dealing with me, you're making money or some sort of favor or something. Your life is appreciably improved. Ex-girlfriends, whatever, oh, you're full of shit. I defy a single person to stand up and say, my life is more poor as a result of my association with Eugene Robinson because I understand patronage. And what he was doing for one brief moment in time is like saying to the rest of the fight world, there lies in this reality. And the reality of it is what I'm doing is good for all of us. But don't fucking hate me for doing for you what, you know, shouldn't somebody else could. I mean, clearly, clearly I'm helping us by helping this sport. And he's not helped by asking for $100 million. He's not helping Zufa. He cares much less about Zufa. You remember, he's got that great, what is that, 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 that Mace song? Throw my, tape in the, throw my tape in the trash, you laugh. Now you, now, now, now you got your ass in my limo. <laughs> Uh, you know, there was a time when he was thinking about quitting MMA because he was making so little headway and he's trying to talk to Chuck Liddell and show them, yeah, yeah, kid, just keep training. See, don't be a fool. Stay in school. and uh, Yeah, whatever. So for one brief moment, Conor McGregor was like, I'm making us all rich. And if you don't understand that, you're too stupid to be on this fucking stage. And there's some people who are on the stage who are not stupid at all, who understood what he was talking about, but were secretly Cain enabling him. And by which I mean Cain enabling him, if you know your Bible. I mean, he's, he's sitting there like, why is God so nice to him? God gives him everything and gives me so little. And, and, and they're missing the trees for the very significant forest. All boats rise when you have a star. And this is where reality and falsehood become a become we have a collision collision course. And that's what we saw with, with Chad Mendez and, and, and Connor. Mendez, okay, yeah, okay, McGregor he said he had a gipped up leg, he had a fucked up leg, he couldn't get off, couldn't get back, couldn't stop the stop the sport. But everybody knows, everybody knows if Mendez had won that fight. That fantastic gravy train, you know, the heavy lifting that McGregor has to do to stay relevant at that point is crazy. He gets one, two shots right at the end of the round on a Mendez, and Herb Dean waves it off. There is not a single right-thinking person, fighters included, unless, the, unless they're feeling like Kane. And I don't mean Kane Velasquez. I mean Kane from the Bible. Unless they feel like Kane who are begrudging Conor McGregor what he's done for the sport. Even if he sits there and tells you, do you see what I've done for the sport? And you want, might want to begrudge him. The reality of it is he has. And, and, and you could be the greatest fighter in the world, and it doesn't mean you're going to do that. As Chris Weidman, I don't think Chris Weidman has been given the chance. But I don't think he's benefited the sport in the same way. Some people have it, and some people don't have it. Mike Tyson said he could sell out Madison Square Garden jerking off. And Mike Tyson was right. You don't need to see him fight. You just need to see him. And that's the fucking, that's the glory. So, you know, there's the real and, and there's the fall. I mean, the, 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 the real Ronda actually I think really is going to fight Cyborg. Because if she loses... If, if she loses the cyborg, if, if she loses the cyborg, you know, you know how much shit, it, they can't sell a cyborg to the American public. They can't sell, sell, sell a cyborg onto Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon. You can't, 
you're not gonna on uh, Stephen Colbert. You're not gonna sell Cyborg on that. You're not gonna sell Cyborg into S <clears throat> SI. You're not gonna sell Cyborg into the next freaking you know Fast and Furious franchise, uh, the uh, Expendables franchise. Oh yeah, two words for you, baby, Gina Carano. Now Gina Carano can't book a fight to save her life and can't get a movie. You know, you, you know, I know she still got royalties coming in and enjoying it. Haywire was not a bad movie at all. I didn't think she was bad. I think between her and Rhonda and uh, who's that? Sienna Gray. <clears throat> what is that? that the porn star chick. <clears throat> I think that uh, Gina was probably a better actress. <clears throat> so, so even th this is where things get weird because even though we all know. It's better, the business, if Conor McGregor continues his rise to fame. Fundamentally, he asked me for the 100 mil is small peanuts compared to what he could bring. The reality of it is, Jose Aldo has very different plans, but the reality of it is, Jose Aldo is not going to do the same for the division or for the fight game or for the business as McGregor is. And that's where things get weird. Things are, you don't you don't know it now. Things are already weird with the Ronda thing. Already weird with the Ronda thing. How? How so, Eugene? How are they weird for the Ronda thing? Because why is she fighting Holly Holmes? You got a tomato, squeeze it. Squeeze that tomato. Get more, the most amount of juice out of it possible because there's nothing. There's nothing else. She should be fighting Cyborg. For what? To have the gravy train stop now? You know, there has to be some sort of handoff. And right now, if you look at MMA in total, what kind of handoff? What? Johnny Hendricks blaming deer meat. And you see how close Johnny Hendricks came. And then and you get very clearly, like, you know, that good old country boy stuff. Sage Northcutt said, I'm going to college. I'm going to college. You're the bald one. You said yourself. You said, uh, it's not a long-term career, man. I, I'm not going to end up a personal trainer at 25. Frick that. So, you know, the, the, what you're seeing is a constant battle between, between uh, um, I don't want to say mendacious. I, I, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, between the, the truth and the, and the non-truth. I mean, for example, somebody was talking about, I told you to read that piece in The Atlantic by that guy. He said, you know, uh, Hitler was in actual fact a, a racial anarchist. Forget about the nationalism. We didn't give a fuck about any of that stuff. And his idea that, that the races would fight it, fight it out. The races would fight it out, and, and the white race would emerge a, a, as victorious. He saw the most convenient vehicle for this to happen via the German state. Simply because he'd get Germans to, Germans to believe it. I, I guess this is, even though he called it the Third Reich, you know, even though we call it the Third Reich, the first two coming, you know, when 700 BC and, or not BC, seven, I mean, these are earlier epics, but, you know, there was all this, the, the, the Romans, the Romans were fucking all over Germany. They were fucking Saxons. <laughs> you know, you got to go much farther, farther north if you want, if you want some sort of, uh, you want some sort of racial homo homogeneity. And even then, the Romans got all over the place. Romans, also known as Africans, also known as, as hybrid vigor. Romans didn't look like Brad Pitt. Hybrid vigor is a reality. So, you know, okay, I understand racial. Is a, and, and indeed, one of the things he said right before the end, he's flying around with Speer telling him to salt the fields, to blow up the, the infrastructure of Germany, and which Speer did, Albert Speer did not do. And then he said he looked at him soulfully in the airplane and go, the German people have failed me. He was betting. He was betting on the fiction of, uh, 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 of, of, uh, of, of, of German belief in, inherent belief in German superiority as the play to uh, this kind of uh, 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 racial uh, uh, UFC. <laughs> and it didn't work out. Didn't work out then. What happened? Did the real become ascendant and, and, and the not real or, or the not real, the fiction of, of Nazi Germany, the fiction of it finally came face to face with the reality. 
and you had people sitting in rubble in Berlin in 1945 wondering where it all went wrong. Right now we're seeing fiction, non-truth come up face to face with truth. No matter how much you might want to stage match this stuff, at the end of, of, of a fight like McGregor and, and Jose Aldo, you are going to have some, you, there's, there's no way that you can get to Jose Aldo. There's no way that you can get to him and convince him that it's, it is even the jungle wants him to lose his fight. And I actually think the sweet spot of Aldo uh, having his head messed with is gone, actually. I think, you know, it, it, McGregor's timing was pretty perfect in the, the fight that, hit, that, McGregor, that Aldo bailed out of. He was in his head as deep as he ever was going to be in his head. And then when the fight didn't happen, the spell was broken. You know, uh -huh. and, and in other words, what happens when other people fight him, they wait for McGregor to get off. I do not think, I think Jose Aldo's technique will be absolutely not to wait and to enforce his, his will, the reality of his will. It's not good business. It's not good business, you know, but in the, in the, in, in, in again, the UFC <laughs> This kind of like Hitler with the racial free for all. At this point, right now, you got to throw throw the, the, the cards on the table, let this thing play out the way it would, and then and then come and then have a plan B that's solid. Jose Aldo wins. You got to throw the guy a, a couple of bones in terms of okay, like I gave health insurance to all the fighters. Maybe we'll have a monthly stipend for fighters who have more than five fights under their belts, so that they don't have to worry about where the next nickel is coming from as a sop to Jose Aldo. You know, of course, if Conor McGregor wins, then there's no sop given to the rest of the field. There's just a hundred dollar check, hundred million dollar check you're gonna have to scratch. You know, some of which you can put for somebody to shove tra uh, 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 Travis down the flight of stairs because you can't, you, 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 you can't, you can't, you can't have, you can't have him this close to the franchise. You know, bumbling, stumbling with this whole wife beating thing. It's just, it's bad. You know, but I, I have been, I just realized at a certain point, I have been tortured by the romantic choices of women connected to me in a familial sense through my entire life. And that, that doesn't seem to stop. I sort of think, have I, have I done that? Have any of the women I known who've been related to had to suffer because I've made, made a bad relationship choice? No, I've kept that shit pretty close to the vest. And now here we are. Now I have it in my real life, and uh, and now I, I I I have it, you know. Uh, it's like you know my my sister's uh, one of my sister's second husbands. We're, we, she's go, going to get married. We're in the zip car. I open the dash the the glove compartment, and what's inside? I go, oh, condoms. And he's like, oh yeah, <laughs> these zip cars. <laughs> you know, people just leave stuff in them. <laughs> Like the guy, but that guy was a piece of shit. Have I done this? And now Ronda's doing it. So now personally, professionally, I feel tormented by the romantic choices of people I made. God damn, that's, that's it? Him? Come on, come on. Um, I understand the, 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 the sometimes female aversion to nice guys. I don't say he has to be a nice guy. I'm not so much a nice guy but I'm not beating up my ex-wife, you know? And I'm not issuing statements that, that just, anyway, I, I gotta get off of that. You, as long as you understand that there's a difference between the truth and the non-truth, and, and that the people who understand the truth to a certain degree have to sell non-truths to the people who don't. And this is the nature of business. You can see the, uh, you know, oh, it's gonna make my teeth whiter. Mm. Oh, it's gonna if I if I drink this special elixir, I won't get sick ever again. Oh, to make my penis longer, Lamar Odom. Herbal Viagra. Shit almost killed him. But seventy-five thousand dollars to spend twenty-four hours uh with with a woman. I could see how he wanna get his money's worth. <laughs> I want my money's worth. I want if I'm spending seventy five thousand dollars for twenty-four hours of sex and companionship. I want it to be heavy on the sex and light on the companionship. I'm not taking you to fucking dinner. <laughs> I'm not taking you to dinner. 
you know, I was like one of those guys. You know what the prostitute equivalent of a cheapskate is? A prostitute equivalent of a cheapskate is a client who, who screws for 59 minutes. <laughs> you know, you got yourself an hour, buddy. You get, you get 60 seconds of talk and 59 minutes of screwing. That's a tough day for a prostitute. You know, they'd rather keep you talking for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I've heard. I've heard. Anyway, anyway you know, uh, uh, Chuck D said it best, or actually maybe it was Flavor Flav, don't believe the hype. Why is this necessary? It's necessary because if they start believing that they can sell you shit, they won't try to sell you anything else. Fortunately, now we're in a good spot. The, the Aldo McGregor thing will be legit. But it, it, it wouldn't have been necessarily before he started asking for 100 mil. Uh, at this point, the bald one is like, okay, let's just see where this lays. Ronda, Ronda, Ronda and Travis, that's legit. But the bald one very much is not sitting around going, let's see where this lays. No, 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 no. I'm going to wield some heavy truths against his non-truthy. I got to make this happen, which is very specifically get him away from the golden child. The, the, the TM Alpha, the, 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 the Uriah Faber, you know, man, that's a hot chick, that Faber chick. Sorry. And TJ Dillashaw. Okay. These, these are non-truths. It's good for business. It doesn't really matter whether Faber beats Dillashaw or Dillashaw beats Faber at this point. It's actually created some heat. And if you don't have the it, you got to bring the heat. Best to have the heat and the it. You know who has the heat and the it? I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Johnny Boney Joni. And, and, and I'm more convinced than ever that, uh, you know, the moves DC is saying, oh, man, I need to take a break. I thought I fought three big fights in the space of a calendar year. I need... I just need a break. And Johnny Boney Joni is saying, you'll get your title defense as soon as you get, or you get, the, you know, as soon as your first fight out. Why wait? What does that say to you? I think it says that he's thinking about heavyweight. Why not? Why not? And now we find out that Fedor is separated from M1. The, the fact that the, the, fact that the, the UFC couldn't put this together He's done himself no favors as well. This fight, fighting against his Indian cat with one fight under his belt, that's absolutely positively pointless. You can give him a warm-up fight against a guy who, you know, have him fight against Tito. That, oh, if he can't get by Tito, he is not worth it. That's really not worth it. That's credible. Tito already said, I need some time to think. Tito wouldn't need any time at all to think about making the money he would make off of the Tito Fedor fight. What do I have to tell you? Everything. Everything? Anyway, the show's over. I got to lie down. All right, 22 viewers. Thank you for turning in. You tuned in just at the end. If you don't know why the setting doesn't include the usual fight poster. Also, got the fight book. I got my hands on some. $35 signed, personalized to you. Uh, uh, while while supplies last, if the supplies run out before your orders are done, and so far I've got three, I think, three orders, and I got three more books. Uh, I will send you the audio book and a T-shirt. That's it. I'm not sending and giving any money back. Are you kidding me? So we've got the the audio, the fight, everything everyone knows. Asking, we're afraid you get this capacity. The audio book. It's a two CD set. It's not just me reading into like this. It's actually, I got production value. I got Foley artists and stuff like that. It's a taste of the book. I can't do a one-to-one. -one. The book is 260 pages or something. That's, that's the eight CDs. It's crazy. So uh, so those are those those are available, the five books now, the CDs. But I got to go. I'm in Las Vegas now. I got about an hour and 45 minutes of sleep. Courtesy of Mr. R. Now, I'm not going to blame it on him. We just had one drink together. I would have I would have hung out with him a bit, a bit more. But when a man says, I'll buy you anything you want, as much as you want, that was going to be a, a disaster. I would not have been able to do the show today. I had to pace myself. It's titration. Titration is the key. 
Anyway, this is the end of round 344. I'm your host, Eugene S. Robinson. We'll see you next week. With, no, we'll see you later on the week with the If I Did It, as well as because uh, I didn't touch at all on the Nick Diaz thing, though I was one of the people that put him over the 100,000. They're going to reverse this fucking decision. They did not expect this to happen. And then the Care Don't Care preview or, or the MMA three-way, not a doubt. So let me tell you about that guy. Now, that guy is back, so we might see either of those later on in the week. But we will see you soon. Anyway, that's it. Look what you made me do! Uh...